Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another episode of Smile to Jannah. In this episode, we'll be responding to some claims made by Mr. Ricky Gervais on one of these American talk shows. Enough jibber jabber. Let's start. Smile to Jannah. Why is there something instead of why is there nothing? Why, why does the universe exist at all? Why is there something? But surely the big question is not why, but how? Well, why is it irrelevant? Why, why is it irrelevant? Then why did Stephen Hawking, in a book, A Brief History in Time, pose the question, why does the universe go to all the bother of existing? It's irrelevant to him because science can't explain the why. It can only explain how. For example, if my nan made a cake, science can explain how it was done, but it can't explain why. The most if probed science can say it's an exothermic reaction, uh, this is the nutritional benefit of it, this is the amount of calories it can give you, but it cannot explain why. So that's why it seems irrelevant. Instead of saying, oh, it's irrelevant, just go and ask my nan, Zishan's nan, why did you make the cake? Oh, I made the cake because he's a good lad and I'm very happy with the grades he got in his exams. Now you know why. Imagine if you thought why was irrelevant, you wouldn't know why my lovely nan made me that cake. How, how is there something? Because you think of God as the prime mover. How is there anything? Well, well, I don't. I don't. This is, this is a, a ridiculous Is there a premise. prime mover? If, if is, you, there a, is there a demiurge that started everything? Well, outside science and nature, I don't believe so. Okay, if we were to rely solely on science, how can science tell us if a poem is a work of art, genius or rubbish? It will measure the lengths of the words, the frequency of certain letters used, but it can't tell you if a poem is scientifically good or bad. How can science tell us if a picture is a work of art or just a smudge of colors by making a chemical analysis of the paints and the canvas? Nope. Science still fails to understand fundamentals like consciousness, morality, and it's restricted to the five senses. And it's not wise for us to limit our entire belief system to our limited five senses. The thing is, th this is the thing, right? So, I I'm an agnostic atheist, technically. A agnost a agnostics um, mean it means no one knows whether there's a God. So everyone's technically agno agnostic. We don't mm -hmm. know. That's true, so that's true. an agnostic atheist is someone who doesn't know there's a God or not, as no one does. So you're not convicted of your atheism. Well, I'm I am. Not sure. No, I am, because atheism is only rejecting the claim that there is a God. Atheism isn't a belief system. If you see science as inductive, and how things can only be acknowledged if they are observed and through experimentation, then yeah, you'd be right. But then according to this criteria, you can't even acknowledge the Big Bang, evolution, origin of life, history of the universe. Because we don't have the luxury of number one, observing these phenomena, and number two, repeatedly observing and experimenting with it in a lab. Islamically, we believe in something called the fitrah, the natural disposition, which is that everybody is born as a Muslim, and it's society that molds our beliefs further. So this is, this is atheism in a nutshell. You say, um, uh, there's a God. I say, can you prove that? You say no, I say I don't believe you then. Mm -hmm. So, um, you believe in one God, I assume? Uh, in three persons, but go ahead. Okay, so you believe... Okay. Mm -hmm. So, but there, there are about 3,000 to choose from that have been, you know, people who believe in... I've done some reading, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, so basically, you believe in... You, you, you deny one less God than I do. You don't believe in 2,999 gods. And I don't believe in just one more. This argument is, to use the technical term from academic philosophy, a bit fallacious. Or in other words, a bit crap. A married man is a bachelor in respect to every other woman on the planet. Would it make sense to disbelieve that final one? That's his wife. Of course it doesn't. Come on, Ricky. Think you can do better than that, my son. Do you ever have a feeling of great gratitude for existence? 
I love, of course. Do you I, ever have I know, I know, I know the chances are yeah. billions to one that I am on this planet as me and never will be again. I guess that's one way to put it. But let's see how physicist Paul Davies has put this. I cannot believe that our existence in this universe is a mere quirk of fate. An accident in history. An incidental blip in the great cosmic drama. Our involvement is too intimate. We are truly meant to be here. Now that is quite brilliant, mate. Ed, I know I can't convince you that there, there is a God, nor do I really want to convince you there's a God, but no. I can only explain my experience, which is that I have a strong desire to direct that gratitude toward something or of someone. Of course, no, of yeah. course. And that, I, thing, is, that thing is God. We're more, we don't, we, we, want, we want to make sense of nature and science, and, we, and it's too unfathomable that, that, that that the, everything in the universe was once crunched into something smaller than an atom. But you don't Three, know that. Well... <sighs> You're just believing but, Stephen but Hawking, but, and that's a matter of faith in his ability. And Stephen Hawking did pose the question why, and you don't really accept the question why. Yes. You don't know it yourself. You're accepting that because someone told you. Yeah, well, but science, science is constantly proved all the time. You see... Colbert has made a good, uh, good point, mate. Atheists tell us to accept what scientists have told us blindly by reading their experiments or whatever in a book and chances are we can never really attain all that equipment to repeat these experiments because and you might think oh, but the experiments they're done it's true they're done but are you honestly trying to tell me every single scientific experiment is done without bias it's done without an ulterior worldview or agenda of course it's not. Sometimes people do fudge the results just so they can push their own theory forward. They receive absolutely hundreds and thousands of money in grant. You really think that they haphazardly just throw that away just because, oh, because of the philosophy of science. Now he said, science is constantly proved over time. So what if it is? Does it disprove God? Just because we know the mechanism could be evolution, Big Bang, or whatever, it doesn't exclude the need for a creator of that mechanism. Because how did that mechanism come into place in the first place? For example, if you figured out how a TV works, your conclusion wouldn't be, ah, oh, I know how a TV works, so there was no creator of the TV. Many of the great scientists of the past were theists, and religion assisted and encouraged the discovery and they came up with such discoveries that we are indebted to them in this day and age. For example, some Muslim uh, scientists, Ibn Sina, Al-Zahrawi, Al-Khawarizmi, Ibn Al-Haytham, some Christian scientists, Galileo, Newton, Pascal, Kepler, the list goes on and on and on. And science has never been a tool to disprove God. For example, when the apple fell on the head of Newton, he didn't say, I understand gravity now. No need for God, mate. I'm an atheist now. We receive data through our five senses. But the things that really matter to us, like the time your firstborn wrapped his or her hand around your finger, or when you observe a sunrise, or when you are able to ride a bike for the first time by yourself. These sorts of feelings cannot be crystallized, calcified, studied underneath a microscope. And we have to understand that our five senses are limited. For example, our sight can only see light from the infrared to the ultraviolet spectrum. We can't hear high pitched sounds like dog whistles or even low pitched sounds like whale songs. And even if we look at natural disasters, Yes, yeah, scientists still don't understand how animals know when an earthquake is coming. And in this book by William Hartson, he goes through many things that till today science still hasn't figured out. For example, we use anesthesia yeah, when we go to the hospital, but we still don't know how it works. We still don't know the biochemistry behind how memory is stored. If we take something like any fiction, in any holy book, in any other fiction, yeah. and destroyed it, yeah. okay, in a thousand years' time, that wouldn't come back just as it was. Yes. Whereas if we took every science book, yes. right, and every fact, and destroyed them all, in a yes. thousand years, they'd all be back, because all the same tests would be the same result.
No, 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 no. That's what makes the Quran special from all the other books. Yeah, the Quran is the only book that has not been changed and will not be changed. But without me getting into the deep proofs and everything, I'll give you very simple proof. No other book of any religion has been memorized cover to cover. The Holy Quran, on the other hand, has been. And he says same test, same result. Is he talking about the same science that you and I have studied? You know, in science, when we're working out equations, we use certain constants. Yeah, it could be the constant for the velocity of light or the universal gravitational constant or the fine structure constant. These numbers are usually the same, hence the term constant. They don't change. But if you probe into these constants, you'll find out that even these change as well. Rupert Sheldrake has done a TEDx talk on this. And he's got a book called The Science Delusion. I recommend you to read it. In chapter 4, he goes through the variations in these constants and how they are done. Alright, next point. Science depends on scientists who have their own bias, who have their own world views. It also depends on equipment, on advancements in science. For example, the latest advancement in science tells us that everything that we're, we're aware of in the universe, the stars, the planets, the comets, everything that we know is only 4.6% of the entire universe as we know it. In fact, majority of the universe is dark matter. And we still don't even know what dark matter is. Most scientific breakthroughs require years of research, of course. But often serendipity provides the final push. In other words, some things were discovered accidentally. For example, penicillin, vulcanized rubber, x-rays, and of course, smart dust. Let me bring physicist Paul Davies here again, mate. Let's see what Paul is saying. Just because the sun has risen every day of your life, there is no guarantee it will rise tomorrow. The belief that it will, that there are indeed dependable regularities of nature, is an act of faith. I don't need faith in science. I don't need faith to know that probably if I jump out of a window, every other time someone jumps out, they smash to the ground. You're right. You don't need faith to tell you what's going to happen in that situation. But you do need faith to tell you what's going to happen after that, mate. Because that's where science stops. So in conclusion, guys, science has given us a lot. There have been many times in science that there has been a complete U-turn. Let me give you a few examples of where science has done a complete U-turn. For example, the steady state theory. The fact that the universe didn't have a beginning, that it's steady. But then came the Big Bang theory, which then totally refuted that and said, no, the universe did have a beginning. If we look at the atom, which comes from the Greek word indivisible. But we all know that the atom has been broken. And we do know that the atom is made of protons, neutrons, electrons, leptons, bosons, and even quarks. And there's probably loads that I missed out as well. Science continuously evolves. For example, let's look at Newtonian physics. We use Newton's physics to understand the movement of planets and moons. But when Einstein's physics came along, we realized that Newton's physics did not work at a micro level, at a quantum level. That's where Einstein's physics came along. Even if we look at the knowledge of dark matter that I explained. So render onto Caesar what belongs to Caesar. All right, Ricky, you know, many of us, we just tend to believe we're unable to uh, hold logical discussions with atheists. We just anytime someone asks us something that we don't understand, we just say, oh, I just believe, I just believe. Spend time with scholars, read, understand your belief. Otherwise, someone's going to come and just say any old nonsense and he's just going to sway you. If you guys want to do some further reading, I recommend this book called The Divine Reality by Hamza Andreas Sotsis, a very good book, mashallah. Until next time, Assalamu Alaikum.